In this section, we're going to look in more detail at the third window, which is the serial decoded window. So here again, we can see the uh, packets of data that have been acquired. Uh, first thing, we can see the uh, numbers of the data. And here we actually just, just see the address and the data bytes. So for example, the packet number two was an address packet, and the address was OC. This is, in fact, the address of the um, DAC that's on the I2C bus and it was a write to the DAC, and the uh, byte was acknowledged, and again we can see the start and end times uh, that this occurred on. The data was then sent, three data bytes, uh, data byte 01, 24, and 1D, was uh, sent to the address OC. Again, each byte was acknowledged, and we can see the transfer times of each particular byte. The next transfer was an address OC. Again, this was addressing the uh, the DAC. And again, it was a write to the DAC. And, and then again, we see the data. So here we see O2. So this was uh, DAC number one, and this is DAC number two. And here we can see the level. So they were both switching, in fact, the same uh, change in level. So they were both uh, data bytes 24. And then finally we see the um, acknowledgement bytes. <clears throat> Looking along the uh, menu, uh, we can export this uh, data as a like an Excel spreadsheet. We can accumulate, so this becomes highlighted. So if we acquired more data, it would add on to uh, this display more packets of data and wouldn't overwrite the existing uh, acquired data. And in fact, this is done by using the uh, buffers provided by the oscilloscope, uh, the data buffers. And this uh, control toggles. In the uh, view menu, we can see what we've been viewing. So we've been viewing uh, just the addresses, data, and error and unknowns. So for example, if I added the start byte, here we can now see uh, packet number one and packet number seven, which were the start bytes. So here, for example, uh, we, we can see the uh, additional packets that have been added. There's the start by packet 7. It's also possible, uh, obviously, to see the uh, stop byte, so we can see the final stops. Also, if any errors or unknown conditions occur, these can be flagged up. In the fields menu, again, we can choose exactly which fields to display. So, for example, if I uh, remove the acknowledgement field, that's now been removed from the display. So reinstate the uh, acknowledgement, and now we can see the acknowledgement field. So every, pa every uh, view can be added or removed. The display formats uh, can be chosen, so at the moment we're in hex, but it could be displayed as a decimal or ASCII. So if it's an ASCII uh, transfer, we can use the ASCII decode. And finally, we can uh, select the, the size of the font. So we can have it uh, larger if required. Uh, the next item along is a link field. So we can link... Uh, this acquisition, say, for example, to a, a, an Excel spreadsheet. And so this data that's been acquired can be linked directly to an Excel spreadsheet. And the advantage of this, then, that the uh, user can add his own uh, mnemonics to each acquisition of data. So it could be more meaningful to a, a particular system. Here we can uh, view where we want to start and, and stop the uh, data uh, that is being displayed. And then we can add uh, stats, so we can add more statistics, and we can search for particular values in the acquired data. This is a very large acquisition, and this is valuable to be able to search for particular data values. So finally, just to uh, indicate that we can also use the uh, cursors to make similar measurements. So the cursors are available here. So for example, we could measure the time between the channel A switching and the channel B switching. So I'll put it on those two edges. And here we can see the uh, actual time 
and here we see the delta time between the the events. But this could also be used to if you wanted to measure the uh, clock period. We could zoom into a particular area and measure the uh, clock period. So if we uh, zoom in a particular area, so here's the zoom and we can choose which area we're zooming in on and then we can position the uh, cursors on e each particular event as chosen here. There is my second cursor. So again we can measure the uh, period of the clock for the particular system. This can also be uh, displayed in the uh, view menu because we can actually display uh, the actual bode rate of the signal. So we can choose down here to display the uh, bode rate. So here we see the bode rate of this particular system was 89 kilobode. And when you're finished with the uh, zoom display, we can uh, return to the original display.